So how do you create cinematic dust and particle effects from your still images that looks like this? I'm gonna show you exactly how in this tutorial. What is up guys, this is Max Square, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to turn your still photos into a moving sandstorm effect inside of After Effects. Now, if you're new here, I create videos all about how to increase your productivity on your Mac, your iPad, or your iPhone, and I release a new tutorial or review every week, so if that's something you're into, consider subscribing below. But without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. So the way we're gonna accomplish this effect is by using a template called the Sandstorm Motion Kit. Now, you can find this on videohive.net, and I'll put a link down in the description below. But once you've got it all installed, you can add it to your workspace. It just has a simple panel right here. What you want to do is create a name for the canvas that you're going to be creating. So for example, I have a skateboarder. I could call this skateboard or whatever. And then you can choose a dimension for the canvas. So you just drop that down. They actually have a couple presets. You can choose HD or 4K. But they actually have some pretty specific resolutions for like Instagram stories. LinkedIn, who, who needs that? But they've got a lot of awesome options here, or you can set a custom dimension or just use the dimensions of the photo you're bringing in. So I'm gonna be bringing in a photo of an elephant here. So I'm just gonna type in elephant and I'm gonna select okay. And I'm gonna go choose a photo of an elephant and hit open. What it'll actually do is split your photo into three separate compositions, which include three different steps. So the first step, it just allows you to reposition or scale your photo. So obviously this is a little big. I'll just scale this down here. And I might move it up a little bit. And that's all you need to do in step one. And then step two is gonna be where you actually highlight the part of the photo you want the sand and the dust to begin. Now the way you're gonna do this is by hitting Command B on your keyboard. That'll bring up your brush tool. Then you can just double click the brush layer in this composition. But there's a few things you need to adjust before you can start brushing. First, you wanna make sure your paint and brush tool windows are open in your workspace. If you don't see them, you can go up to Window at the top, select Brushes, and then select Paint. And under the paint window, you wanna make sure opacity and flow are set to 100%. The mode is set to normal, channels, alpha, duration, constant. And then for the brushes panel, you wanna make sure everything under brush dynamics is set to off. The spacing is set to 25%, hardness 100%, roundness 100%, the angle is set to zero, and then the diameter is pretty much up to you. And then lastly, you just wanna select that red box underneath the photo and set the opacity to 100%, and then you're good to go. So you can start highlighting your photo, and if you realize that your brush size is too small or too big, you can actually hold down the command key and either scroll up or down to adjust the size. Just a nice little shortcut that'll speed up your workflow. And once everything is highlighted, you're good to move on to step three. Now this is gonna be where you highlight the foreground of your photo. So in that case, this is gonna be our elephant. So with our brush tool selected, just double click that brush layer again. And then you can pretty much just loosely highlight the entire foreground of your photo. It doesn't have to be too exact. And then once you're done, you can jump to your elephant comp or whatever it's called, and then skip into about four seconds where you see that edit here marker, and you'll see a demo of the effect. Now it's gonna take a couple seconds to load, but once it is done rendering, you can see how cool this effect looks. Now you'll notice that we have a couple of control layers on the left here. We have Sandstorm, the Scene Controller, Extras, and then Camera Settings. And the first layer is gonna give you control over the two main parts of this effect. That's gonna be the dust and the sand. So the dust is kind of the main smoky kind of effect, but the sand is kind of those fine particles you may or may not see here. But you can control the sharpness and the opacity of those. So for example, if I change the sand sharpness to 50 instead of 20, you can start to see it a little bit more clearly. You can also increase the dust opacity. So right now it's set to 80 and you can kind of make out the elephant beneath it. But if I set it to 100, it'll just be a lot more crisp. But then you also get some controls over the photo itself. So you can adjust the shadow levels, the highlight levels, and you can also play around with an auto setting. And then you can tint the photo if you want to. It does a pretty good job by itself, but if you feel the need to control it, you do have that option. And then in the scene controller layer, you can control things like the blur. So if I enable that, you'll see the background blurs out a little bit. That's why we have to highlight the foreground so it knows which is which. And you can play around with that. You can see it's a little bit rough right now. It's because I went pretty loosely around the edges. So you can always go back and adjust that if needed. Or you can play around with the brush softness and that'll just increase 
how soft that outline around your main object is. But you may notice that there are some color effects on the photo, and that's because there is a color filter being applied. That's this color one option, and if I disable that, you'll see what the photo looked like when we first brought it in. And there's actually 10 different filters you can use. I think this is really cool, it just adds a cinematic effect, and it does a pretty good job of matching it to your scene, so it doesn't look super fake or anything like that. Now in the extras panel, you do get a couple more settings you can change, which I can't get into right now because there's just so many, but you really do get a lot of control over the final look of your photo. So once you're done adjusting the effect, you can actually start to render and export the video. So if we go into the render folder, you'll see that we have five different compositions. The first option we have is the hit composition. This has your photo on a nice white background with a drop shadow, and then it kind of impacts with this huge hit and focuses straight in on your photo, which is a pretty cool effect. In the in loop out composition, we just have a simple fade in from the photo into the effect and then back out. Under the loop composition, it's just a loop of the actual effect. There's no fading in or out, it's just constant. Under reveal, we have a similar effect to the hit impact, except there is no white border around it, so it's kind of full screen. And then lastly, we have the time remapping option, which is very similar to the hit impact at the beginning, but then it'll actually reverse that at the end, which is a really cool look. Now do keep in mind that all five of these comps are gonna take some time to render in and out. Even on my 5K iMac, it took about 20 or 30 minutes to render all of them. And this will vary depending on your composition size, how big the photo is, but it will take some time, but it's well worth it in the end. So that's everything you need to know to make that effect inside of After Effects. But what's cool is that this template actually includes a Photoshop action. So you can load that into Photoshop and do the exact same effect inside of Photoshop to your photo. And you get just as much control with all of the colors, the sharpness, the opacity, all those kind of things. But you don't have to open up After Effects. So you can do the exact same thing if you just want a still image. So guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed. If so, be sure to like and subscribe. It just lets me know that you're interested in the content and you want to see more just like it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.